Welcome to our video on sizing steel columns for some common cross-sectional shapes. Uh, we're going to look particularly at pipe, HSS square sections, HSS meaning hollow steel section. We also have hollow steel sections that are round or rectangular, but we don't want to do everything under the sun, so we're going to focus our efforts on HSS square. We're also going to look at wide flange columns and we're going to start off uh, comparing their performance for a so-called light load case and basically that will consist for example of a 25 foot tall column that might be supporting a section of roof in a big box building So we're going to talk about some of our uh, design data, which we outlined previously, but we'll talk about it a bit further. Um, we have steel pipe, um, and I know these tables are hard to read right now, but when we get down to actually trying to use them, uh, we'll blow them up. But across the top we have pipe, 12 inch, 10 inch, 8 inch, 6 inch, 5, 4, 3 and a half, and 3. Tables don't go, go down below 3 because it's very rare anybody would want to size a column of smaller dimension than that. The likelihood of its being damaged by some kind of lateral force uh, is too high. Uh, so we the tables don't go below a three inch pipe. Uh, you'll notice this says extra strong, which means thicker walled. Here's standard, extra strong, standard, double extra strong, extra strong, standard, and so forth. Down below that we have wall thickness, uh, the weight per foot of the members. And then we have the, the table that we're using. And this table is organized according to effective length. Now this is not slenderness because the slenderness is all folded into the mathematics of generating this table. Here we have effective length in feet, which for us is going to be equal to the actual length of our column because we're assuming we have a pin-pin column and that's how we uh, defined effective length, or length originally was with reference to our base case which was the pin-pin column. This table gives design strength and axial compression in kips. So in other words, when we come in with our factored load and we scan across this table and we find some kind of a column that at that effective length will work. This is the entire set of what we have to work with in terms of pipe columns. It's all in these two charts, which for the moment are arrayed side by side. So now I'm going to do a blow up of the top of this so you can see it a little bit better. 12 inch pipe, 10 inch pipe, so forth. And these are sometimes designated like in multi-frame as P12 uh, or P10. Um, here we have effective length, here we have at an effective length of 15 feet, we can see that a standard 10 inch pipe will support 313 kips of force safely and that includes this resistance factor. So in other words, this number says you've already got a safety factor associated with the uh, acknowledged uncertainty in, this mem in the strength of this member. This is the same table for 5-inch pipe, 4-inch pipe, and so forth. We also have tables for square tube. This is the full range of the table from top to bottom. It's hard to read, but you'll notice there's HSS 12 by 12, HSS 10 by 10, and then wall thicknesses um, and the weight per foot uh, below that. So I'm going to do a blow up of that. This is the upper part. So we're told um, that this is the actual, uh, this is the 5 8 inch thickness. This is the precise thickness to which you design. This is the weight per foot. Uh, so an HSS 12 by 3 8 weighs 58 pounds per foot. You'll notice some daggers up here that have to do with issues related to local buckling. Uh, for the columns that we're going to be dealing with, we'll, we will not be in a regime where local buckling is the governing factor. Uh, so you may ignore these daggers and pick whichever member is lightest.
Okay, so that's 12 by 12 and 10 by 10. We also have an HSS 8 by 8, which we can blow up, and a 6 by 6. Then we have 5 by 5 and 4 by 4. And it goes all the way down to uh, HSS 3.5 by 3.5 by various wall thicknesses, 3 by 3 by various wall thicknesses, and so forth. <coughs> the pipe columns are pretty easy to size because you don't have a whole lot of choices. And, and that's going to end up being true for the wide flanges. It's not that there aren't a huge number of wide flanges you could choose from, but most of them were designed for beams. They tend to be really strong in one direction and really weak in another. So the tables that we are using for wide flanges tend to be fairly limited. The HSS square is a little bit tricky because you have lots of different options. And remember, your goal is to pick something that has an adequate force capacity here, but has the lightest possible weight. That's the game we're playing. And so the most common place to make mistakes is here. And who knows, maybe I'll make a mistake on this video and you'll be able to catch me doing that. Okay, wide flanges. We have W12 buys. This one weighs 336 pounds per foot. Um, we have a bunch of data in this table. What we're mainly interested in is this stuff up here, though. So I'm going to go blow that up. W12 by, well, this is not exactly the same table, but we're in the ballpark of what we need anyway. A W12 by 106 is nominal 12 inches deep and weighs 106 pounds per foot. A W12 by 65 is a very common section that we use because it's close to square. The flange is almost the same width as the depth. This series down here is a little less favorable, but nonetheless was included in this table. Okay, so here we got the W10 buys. This is a close-up of the W10 by page. And a W10 by 49 is the lightest section that has that property of having a flange that's the width, uh, has a width essentially equal to the depth. Now, that's sort of squarish in footprint, but it's still stronger relative to buckling in this direction than it is to buckling in that direction. But nonetheless, uh, the closer to square we can get these things, generally the better they're going to perform as a column. And so this series from 49 on up is very common uh, in structural applications. Now here's a table for W6s. Um, there are three of them, 25, 20, and 15. Uh, and I made this table up. It's not actually in the steel manual because the steel manual is generally encouraging you not to use something as small as a W6 because it tends to be hard to make connections to it. But for illustrative purposes, I've included that. Okay, so we're going to start off with a lightly loaded column. Um, and in this case, we're going to say the dead load is 6, the live load is 18, and the factored load is 36 kips. So this is what we have to design to. We're going to assume the uh, overall length of this column is 24 feet, which as I mentioned earlier, uh, this load and this length might correspond to something like a, a big box space or something where it's just roof that's being supported and it's a fairly long slender column. So I've written down here the column cross-section type, pipe, HSS square, wide flange. We're going to find the lightest of each of those. We're going to write down the pounds per foot and we're also going to write the uh, column efficiency as a ratio of the load being supported um, to the uh, self-weight of the column, which has to account for both um, the weight per foot, but also the length of the column. All right, so we want to start with the pipes. We're going to go up and find the appropriate tables uh, that we need to be working with. And remember that we're looking for 36 kips of capacity in a 25, 24 foot long column. Actually, I think I intended for this to be 25 feet. 
Okay, well, I originally intended 25 feet, but we're going to go with 24, because that's what we got here. So when we go look at uh, standard pipe, um, we're generally in this range, 5 or 4 or whatever. And I'm going to scroll down in this table until I get to 24 feet. So right here, I have, I'm looking for something with 36 kips of capacity. <coughs> Standard 5 inch pipe at 24 foot effective length has a capacity of 39.1. And none of these others... Uh, do any better so and a standard six inch pipe is always heavier than a standard five inch pipe So there's no point in looking above pipe five standard which supports 39.1 kips per foot at an effective length of four feet So now if I go back to my table under pipe, I'm going to write five inch standard which weighs 14.6 just to make sure we got that right we're going to come up here and see that the weight per foot of standard 5 inch pipe is 14.6. And then we're going to calculate the ratio of 36,000 pounds to the weight of this pipe, which is 24 feet times 14.6. And when we get done with that, it says that the pipe is supporting a, an axial force which is 102.7 times its own self weight. Now we might think that's pretty good. A structural element that supports more than 100 times its own weight. But that's actually pretty darn inefficient for a steel column. And the problem is that we have a very light load and a very long column. And the column is ending up quite slender. And because of that, its failure mode is buckling. We're not getting anywhere near the yield stress of the material. So we need extra material to deal with the buckling problem above and beyond what's just necessary to absorb the load in and avoid crushing or yielding of the material. <coughs> now we want to go size an HSS square. And to do that, we're going to look at two tables. Uh, we're going to scan along at 24 feet. So I'm going to come down here. I have an effective length of 24 feet. And uh, up above I have an HSS 6x6. And when I scan across, by the way, I hope this table is all visible. Um, when I scan across, I discover that at an effective length of 24 feet, a 6x6 by 3 16 which weighs 14.5 pounds per foot, is able to absorb 57.5 or support 57.5 kips of axial force. So let me just make sure that that's readable right there and an effective length of 24 feet. I'm just barely squeezing all this stuff in on your screen. So 6x6 by 3 16 14 and a half pounds. Let's go see if there's a 5x5 five five that's lighter. So here we have HSS 5x5 five five up here. Uh, when we go down to 24 feet of effective length, we see this one doesn't work, but that one does. That one weighs 15.6 pounds per foot, which is more than the weight of this one, which also worked at 24 feet. And it is a 6 by 6 by 3 16 which weighs 14.5 pounds per foot. So here we have HSS square, 6 by 6 by 3 16 14.5 pounds per foot. These two are almost identical. They are slightly different, and so we see that this HSS square is slightly more efficient. Now keep in mind, uh, almost nothing we say about these things is precise because we're, we're not looking at smooth effects. We're taking jumps from 4 inches to 5 inches, or 5 inches to 6 inches, or 3 sixteenths wall thickness to 1 quarter. 
So we're never matching exactly what we need and we never have a perfect way <laughs> of comparing the round pipe to the HSS square. Let's just say though that what this these numbers are indicating is these two shapes are fairly similar and the differences probably have to do with the exact shapes that happen to be available. So now let's go look at the wide flange. Uh, this is the table that we have to work with. And uh, boy, I apologize for some of these things not fitting, but we have W6 wide flanges. Those are effective depth of six inches. They can be 25, 20, or 15 pounds per foot. And we can scroll down here until we get 24 feet. And we discover that the only thing that works at 24 feet is a W6 by 25 which can support 43.6 kips. This is almost big enough, but not quite. So one of the things you'll note is these comparisons are not completely fair because if somebody had rolled a 21 pounder, that would have worked. Uh, so we're ending up having to jump to a fairly substantially over-designed W6 by 25 uh, in order to make this work. All right, so I put a W6 by 25. By the definition of this nomenclature, this is a six inch deep beam. It weighs 25 pounds per foot. So I'm gonna put 25 right there. And then we're going to calculate 36,000 pounds divided by the weight of this column, which is 25 pounds per foot times 24 feet. So when I work all of that out, uh, I'm going to highlight some key things here. This was the best performer, but the hollow sections generally were about equal. This is by far the weakest performer. And none of this is very surprising because we ex we're in a lightly loaded situation. We have a tall, slender column. It's going to be governed by buckling. This is a situation where an efficient cross section is absolutely crucial. And these hollow sections have more efficient cross sections for resisting buckling than do the wide flanges. So here's a summary of those comments. <laughs> but this is, this is a really sad steel column. Any steel column that's only supporting 60 times its weight is not a very good steel column. On the other hand, you could say, well, there's not very much weight up there. This is still a pretty light column. It's a really inexpensive column, so we might as well go ahead and use it. In fact, I doubt this column is much more expensive than that one or, or this one, but even though it has more weight because it's easier to make. Uh, the reason you wouldn't normally see a wide flange in a place like a big box store is they come through, people would bash their shoulders against the flanges when they walk too close to the column or fork trucks could get hooked on the flange. So there are a lot of motives for going with these hollow steel sections, not just the fact that they're structurally more efficient, but they also fit the functional need more effectively. All right, so in summary, um, slender columns, lightly loaded, tall columns tend to be slender. They tend to be governed by buckling. They tend to not be very efficient and they tend to be more efficient if we have a cross-section that works reasonably well in terms of resisting buckling in all directions, which would be hollow sections, either square or round. So that concludes uh, our discussion of sizing steel, standard steel columns under light load conditions.